Good afternoon, everyone. Hello, how are we? Good, good, good. Good, no responses? Good, good, awesome, awesome. So today we are talking about governance and growth. It's quite interesting because the earlier session discussed governance from a regulatory standpoint and compliance, but today we're focusing on corporate governance as it relates to your business, your startup, your internal organizations and processes. So I mean, I hear we, we hear innovate, innovate, but does anyone really understand what governance is? Anyone? Don't be shy. Okay, so I'll, I'll do that then. So governance pretty much is a mechanism or a structure put in place to dictate how a company operates, how it's managed, how it's run. Um, I mean, if you look at this screen, there's a whole bunch of writing on there, but in simple terms, governance just determines how this business operates, how it is run, who does what, what does, who does this, who handles what, and when it's handled. Um, effective governance is very important for a business. There's no business that functions without it. Again, I don't blame people when we say we don't really understand what governance is because we always hear innovate, innovate, innovate. But are we actually innovating in terms with what the law is saying? Are we innovating in line with expert guidance? Are we innovating with sense, basically? We're all excited, we're looking for what to do with our products, put it out there, the ecosystem is getting us all excited, but it's very important that we're doing this in line with what we're supposed to do in order to achieve maximum outcome. Okay, so basically, okay, I'm not sure why this is half, split in half, but the role of governance in startups will say accountability. Can anyone tell me what that is? Simple terms, or what you think it does. It's on the screen if it helps. Thank you very much. Risk management, identifying and mitigating potential risks, strategic guidance, transparency. Choosing the right governance model. Now, governance is quite simple to understand, but at the same time, the different types of governance. Do you want to have an agile governance system? Do you want to have a traditional governance system? Now, when I say traditional, imagine a tall, long building, right? A big brown wall. And at the top, you have all the management and C-suite executives in their offices, and on the bottom, you have your foot soldiers. Now, you see a typical commercial bank, for instance. At the top, you know you have your CEOs, your top management, you have your mid-management, and then you have your floor staff. Now, with a traditional system, there are clear-cut rules, there are clear-cut responsibilities. You know that, okay, this person does ABC, this person does this and that. There's no inter interwoven responsibility. You know this is what is going to come out of this process if we adopt this system. You know the kind of risks that are involved. You know the maximum output that will come out of it. Well, with an agile, agile governance system, it's a bit more flexible. So today we see this type of things with like startups, with fintechs, etc. You see situations where a founder will get onto the open plan, roll his sleeves up and sit with his team members and they'll figure out how to, you know, get through a task at hand. But you don't typically see that with the traditional system. So again, it depends on the nature of your business in determining what type of structure to adopt. Do you want to um, adopt an agile governance in the sense that your team members are working with CC executives? Do you want to adopt a more traditional structure? It depends on the startup size, the stage of development, and then, of course, your industry and market conditions. Key governance structures. Are we familiar with what a board of directors are? Or what they do? Can we hear it? Yeah, go ahead, you raised your hand up. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. Anyone else? Or do we all believe it's the same thing? Yeah? Yeah, awesome. So pretty much the board of directors is a group set up, nominated individuals, usually industry experts, you know, familiar with these type of businesses that are able to give you professional and um, expert advice, so to speak. It's usually made up of your non-executives and your executives. And in terms of differentiating between a non-executive and an executive, a non-exec is someone that is not involved in your day-to-day -day business, while your executive is usually someone involved in the day-to-day -day business, like your CEO, for instance, your CMO, your CTO. Now, an advisory board is somewhat different in the sense that an advisory board advises on a specific type of matter. Now, a board of directors advice on everything as it relates to the operations of the business. 
but not necessarily the day-to-day. -day. But your board of, um, your advisory board advises on a subset, a specific task, and your executive community is also flows from your board of directors. It comprises of your CEOs, independent directors, industry stakeholders. They also focus on a specific task as opposed to a BOD, which is a board of directors that you know, focuses on much, much more. Okay, legal framework and ethical standards. Again, the earlier session that we had pretty much talked about compliance and regulatory laws, regulations, the Startup Act, et cetera. While you're innovating, it's very, very important that you're not just innovating. I don't think that this can be overemphasized. I don't think that we can stress this enough. You're not just building, building, building. You have to make sure that whatever you're building is not violating the laws of the country that you're operating in. You have to make sure that whatever you're doing is in tandem with what the regulators have said so that you don't run into problems. You build a product and you realize that, oh my God, this is, for instance, under some regulation or an act that you're not even familiar with, this is actually against that act. So you have to make sure that you are complying and adhering to the prescribed rules, of, rules and regulations. And again, that's where people like us come in. We're lawyers, feel free to reach out to one of us, discuss with us, ask us, are we doing the right thing? What should we be doing? What should we be looking out for? Again, some of the key regulators, in addition to the NIDA that was discussed earlier, is the Corporate Affairs Commission. I'm pretty sure some of us that have registered a business is very um, you know, familiar with the CAC and what they do. The Securities and Exchange Commission, which is also um, the regulator of cryptocurrency, for instance, virtual assets, etc. Ethics, 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 ethics. Anybody? Ethics? We all know what that means, right? Ethics, very, very important that we uphold integrity and ethical consideration and standards when we innovate. Steps to implement an effective governance. Aside what is stated on here, I'd like for someone to tell me what else you think is an effective step for implementation, aside what's listed on here. I'll give you a minute to digest what's on there. Any takers? I'm also looking at you top 15 because you guys are on your way to kickstart in this journey. Unfortunately, we don't have a minute for them to answer questions, but I can okay. give two more minutes so they Please. can okay. Okay. wrap up. Thank I'll you. I'll say something. We'll just wrap up quickly. Thank you. Sorry? Definitely, exactly. So it's very important that we clearly define each role within the governance framework, establish comprehensive guidelines and protocols, conduct frequent meetings and assessments, adapt and refine governance practices regularly. Again, nobody is saying don't innovate, innovate. we're just saying balance it with structure, simply. We have popular examples of people that you see do great things in the space. We have Andela, we have Paystack, we have Flutterwave, amongst many others. Bringing us back to another of our case studies, we're all aware with InterSwitch and the great things they've done. We've seen them reach unicorn status, which of course is where we all hope to get to. Yes, yes. Conga as well. I mean, of course, while we also try to adopt these practices, we're not oblivious to the fact that there may be some constraints and challenges. Resistance to formal structures, limited resources, regulatory uncertainties. Best practices involve regular feedbacks, evolving in stakeholder and governance discussions. Again, just to piggyback off the earlier session, imagine trends in governance. We see data, big data and AI being leveraged in making um, governance decisions amongst others. So in summary, as I have less than 30 seconds, um, pretty much understanding the innovation, the, I'm sorry, understanding the balance between innovation and structure. Innovate, 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 but innovate in line with what the law says. Innovate with what your, your advisory board says to you. Innovate with what industry experts have advised you to do. Again, implementing these practices without stifling creativity is highly, highly important. 
Um, I ha like I mentioned earlier, I'm a technology lawyer. My colleagues are spread all over the room. Feel free to meet any of us for questions, clarity, any further information you may require. Thank you.